Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast 8.1, Shapes. Chapters 8 and 9 are together. There's only a small part of chapter 9, but do go ahead and start those things. Um, you want to get out the sheet you picked up in class today that has all the different shapes on it. And on that sheet, it tells you, it says Vesper, which is valence. Well, it's the next slide, so I might as well jump right into it. Vesper is valence, shell, electron, pair, repulsion. So valence means outer, shell means shell, electron pairs. Now electron pairs are either bonds or uh, lone pairs. And if I ask you why things have a certain shape they have, electrons pair repel is the answer, or part of the answer to every question. Why is substance X the shape that it is? Because electron pairs repel each other and they get as far as possible. And if you remember the little molecular diagram thing we had, you could check those bond angles which showed they were far apart. Shapes are based on three dimensions, so 90 degrees are not favored. Um, we know if we have six regions, it does happen, but it is very unstable and it's a bad one. This is best for covalent um, molecules, ionics do lattices. So covalent molecules, um, everything we have is going to have one central atom. Now this is for AP ke chemistry. Um, most everything we have has one central atom. There are a few organics, yay, Melissa's getting excited, where we have more than one um, central atom. How to draw Lewis dot and 3D structures, and you want to use it in pencil because you're going to erase. Lewis is not a 3. 3D is three-dimensional. Lewis is not three-dimensional. Um, my advice to you is to always draw it three-dimensional and it will be accepted for full credit. So how do we decide how to draw these things? The least frequently occurring atom goes in the middle and the other ones go outside. Again, there's one central atom. Then you add the valence electrons. So using your periodic table, it'll tell you how many valence electrons something has. Then connect the dots, la la la, and Typically, you're going to connect single dots. Single dots are reactive, and pairs are less reactive. Add double, triple bonds if needed. The octet rule is awesome, which means most everything wants eight. Single electrons are horrible, meaning they are absolutely a last resort and almost never happen. So most everything wants eight electrons in its outermost shell. And the, in order to break the octet rule on the small side, the central atom has to be in group one, two, or three. To break the octet rule on the big side, um, it's going to be a non-metal, and it has to be on the third row or below. And the reason why it can break that octet rule is because it has d orbitals to use. Because remember, if it's S2, P6, that's one orbital, and three orbitals, that's four orbitals, which is four bonds. You need more orbitals to do that, which is where your D10 comes in. All right, let's just do a whole bunch of them. HCN is the first one. Um, the way it's written usually helps, and carbon always goes in the middle. Um, always is good. Carbon has four valence electrons, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to try and let that thing be my guide. H has one valence electrons in the first column. N has five valence electrons, one, two, three, four, and now the fifth one you have to make a pair, and I aim my single electrons at each other, and then I connect the dots, la, 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 connect the dots, la, la. Now looking at this, you see there are single electrons on the top and on the bottom, and you can connect those as well, connect the dots, la, 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 connect the dots, la, la, so this looks like this. Now we need to make sure that these um, have eight. Okay. Now hydrogen, remember bonds count as two. Hydrogen has two because it counts both of those. Carbon has two from the hydrogen, four, six, eight. So carbon has eight and nitrogen has two, four, six, eight. And that's eight. Now some people say, hey, you counted the same electrons for carbon and nitrogen. And that's true. If I asked, um, my daughters, do you have a house? They would say yes. If I asked my wife, do you have a house? They would say yes. If I asked my other daughter, does she have a house? She'd say yes. Does that mean there are three houses? No, there's one house. They all share them. Oh. So this works with molecular compounds because molecular compounds do what? They share electrons, which is why they can count for eight. XEF4 is the next one. 
so XC is the least frequently occurring when it goes in the middle. I know it's a noble gas. You wouldn't expect it to form bonds, but AP chemistry is never wrong, so it tells you that it does. Fluorine, I'm going to aim. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fluorine has seven valence electrons, and I'm going to aim my single electrons at xenon because that's where I think it's going to bond. So fluorine has seven. Fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to, yep, you guessed it, connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. La, la. Now I've got an issue with a couple of things. Um, first of all, I have four single electrons, and I circled these in very pale blue. And that's bad. So remember, single electrons are evil, but I don't want to form another bond with anything. All of my fluorines have eight, right? Three pairs and one bond equals eight, right? Each one's a, yeah, it's eight. So what I can do, I'm the master of the electron, is I'm going to group these guys together and make two pairs. So now my xenon is going to have two pairs and four bonds. This is the shortcut for writing bonds with the lines, for writing pairs, I'm sorry, not bonds. So in this case, all of the fluorines have eight, which is good. Xenon is breaking the octet rule, but it has to be in the third row or below, and it is, so that's okay. And xenon has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So xenon has twelve electrons, and it's the central atom, so if you have to break the octet rule, it's okay to break it with the central atom. It has to be the central atom that breaks it. And its shape then can be determined a little later. Oh, I guess I do have to talk about shape, don't I? Let me go back here and talk about shape about the end. Look at the central atom of HCN as I redraw it. C N. I have no electrons up here on the top. I have nothing over here. So when these two repel, they have a 180 degree bond angle, which means it's linear. Looking down here, I have six regions of the periodic table, and if you look at your little chart, six regions has a 90 degree bond angle. And with my lone pairs, if you think of the octahedral shape, is what you should think of first, octahedral. Um, and you have two pairs, you're going to pull off the top one and the bottom one, and the shape is going to be square, planar, or cross. And H3. Um, central atom is the least frequently occurring one, which is nitrogen. One, two, three, four, five. It has five valence electrons. It's in the fifth column. Each hydrogen has one. Aiming my single electrons. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. La, la. Okay, so now I'm thinking um, about this. It has four regions in the periodic table. And if it had four, the four regions would be one bond three pairs. Four regions tells me it's based off the tetrahedral shape. So its bond angle is 109.5-ish. All right. Um, and this is going to be pyramidal. I'm going to try and draw my first 3D structure for you. Oh, look at the dashed line. It's sinking into the page. Oh, look out. Here's a hydrogen busting out right at you. Oh, and there's one in the same plane as the paper. So there you go. Four regions. Nitrogen has eight. And each hydrogen has two. And remember, hydrogen only needs two. Six. Sulfur in the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six. F6. One, two, three, four. Remember, I cannot make chains of Fs, so I need to just kind of stick them out somewhere. Five, six. Each fluorine has seven. And now, just like before, I'm going to connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. La, la. Connect. Oh. Now, looking at this, all my fluorines are happy. You're always happy with your Fs. Um, it has eight valence electrons. Sulfur started with six electrons, and each one of those electrons has a bond, so it's responsible for 12 electrons. That is not favored, because we want to have eight. But there's nothing else we can do. Is it okay that sulfur breaks the octet rule? 
Well, sulfur is on the third row. So that means it does have a 3D to promote into. So while not our favorite, it's what we're stuck with. Bond angles here, if it's got six regions, this is a really bad drawing of it, but it would have, ooh, look at that, fading into the background. That's supposed to be an F. Fading into the background. Dashed lines are fading into the background. Wedges, look out, it's coming at you. Oh, look out, it's coming at you. And then the solid lines are in the same plane. I didn't add the valence electrons around there, but you get the idea. PCL something I can't read. PCL5. Phosphorus goes in the middle, and phosphorus has five. One, chlorine, 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 chlorine. Oh, no, I have five. I have to put it somewhere. Chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. So I add my seven valence electrons. And, of course, I aim my single electrons to form bonds. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Connect the dots. La, la. Now, this has five regions, so that means that phosphorus has ten electrons, which we say is bad because, of course, it doesn't want because they don't want. But phosphorus is most stable with a full octet or eight is desired, but we don't have that. Is it okay that phosphorus breaks the octet rule? Is it on the third row? Oh, yes, it is. It, and that means it has the D block to promote into. Chlorines all have eight. They're perfectly happy. Let's draw this 3D style. Chlorine up, chlorine down. Oh, sinking back. <gasps> Busting out, duck your head. Look out, that might hit you. And chlorine. And, of course, I should put the valence electrons, but I'm lazy and get you out of here in a reasonable amount of time. Resonance. Sometimes more than one resonance structure is possible. For example, ozone. You should know ozone is O3. And, oh, that's what I'm really thinking is I lost my drink, which makes me sad. So if I were to draw ozone, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, and then I need to put six here. Oh, that was a bad drawing of electrons because I should have aimed my pairs of electrons at the center one. So connect the dots. La, la, la. Oh, no. Now, what some people are going to try and do is say, oh, you can make it look like this <gasps> and make a little ring. Rings are wrong. Rings are wrong. Rings are wrong. Rings are wrong for Bohr model. Rings are wrong here. The reason why the rings would be wrong is the bond angle here would be 60 degrees. Remember, 90 is bad. 60 degrees is awful. It is terrible. It is completely unacceptable. So what's going to happen is we're going to be the master of the electron and move electrons up here and form a double bond. That would get rid of these. Oops. I'm going to do the same thing, move this one over here and this one all the way over here and form a double bond. But that wouldn't work because then I'd have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 around oxygen and oxygen's on the second level so that is not allowed. So I'm going to have to try something else and what I'm going to try that's a little different is I'm going to do the same thing with the left hand side but this right hand side instead of making a double bond I'm going to pick it up and put it over here. I've written over this thing way too much. So I'm going to try it again. So O, right now I have O with a single bond and an O with a double bond. Okay. So the left hand side has three pairs and one bond. The right hand side has two pairs and two bonds. Okay. So you'd say, okay, that's fine. And if you took organic chemistry, you could say, oh, look, I could rotate this around and do a 180 and they would be the same thing. So it doesn't really matter where it goes. Now it does. Each of these has eight. So it matters if you've got a double bond or not, because if I were to name these three oxygens, they really would kind of care which one had the double bond or not. So if I named them Mo, Larry, and Harrison, then right now Mo has a single bond and Harrison has the double bond. That's very different and it, it is perfectly correct to write it this way, where Harrison has a single bond. Um, Larry, of course, is the same as far as it goes, one double, one, one single. And over here, whoops, would be the same. So these structures actually are different because the bonds move back and forth. And really what happens is these structures are not separate structures. What happens is these two are a blend 
And this is favored because if it's a blend, it spreads out the repulsion, so it is referred. Realize a double bond is four electrons trapped in a tight little space. And what do electrons do to each other? They repel each other. Absolutely, completely. As much as Kirsten is repelled by Vanderjat putting whatever it was that uh, to dress up, what is it, like a hat or something in his armpit. She was repelled by that. That's like four electrons put together. So resonance structures increase stability because they spread out repulsion. Carbonate. Carbonate is CO3, negative 2. So central atom is carbon. One, two, three, four. Three oxygens, O, O, O. And each oxygen has six. I shouldn't have made those pairs, but I might as well stick with it now. And connect the dots. La, la, la. Okay, now I've got two electrons here. So I'm going to move this one down here and this one down here. And that would give me... Oxygen, or carbon now has four bonds. So carbon has eight electrons, so it's happy. This oxygen right here is happy because it has eight, but this oxygen here and this oxygen here are unhappy because they only have seven. Boo. So what they can do, because this is CO3 negative two, that means I have two bonus electrons to put anywhere I want to. Well, I will put my bonus electron right here to make a pair and make it eight and right here. And let me just redraw that, C double O O. Oh. And to represent that I have two bonus electrons, I put CO3 negative 2. Um, acids have H's on the O's, no central atom. So nitric acid is HNO3, and that would look like this. I don't feel bad, this is getting long. Um, one. To single, single, so what's going to happen is we're going to get a double bond with one of these guys, okay, so this electron's going to go away and make a double bond with this one that's going to go away. This electron right here, I X dot in blue is going to go over here, okay. Then I have an H left over, or I said it's going to attach to one of them, it's got a single electron, HNO3. So that's how acids are drawn. You've got your central atom, and then the hydrogen attaches onto an oxygen for an acid. Um, Tiebreakers. So sometimes there's a couple of what seems like acceptable resonance structures. Octet rule rules. So try your best to make the octet rule be favored. Resonance is favored. Why? Because it spreads out repulsion. And remember, repulsion makes it a higher energy state, which is less favored. Formal charge breaks the tie. Valence electrons minus bonded electrons equals formal charge, and we'll do examples of that in class. Um, you, you get to count half of the bonded electrons. So um, if I were to figure out the formal charge of this guy right here, if I'm doing nitrogen, um, nitrogen brings in five, okay, minus half of the bonded electrons. So one, two, three, four. Five minus four. So nitrogen has a plus one charge which, you know, nitrogen tends to be negative, so that's not the best, but that's what happens. If I look at um, this oxygen over here, oxygen brings in six, and it has two, four, six, minus six for the pairs, minus half of the bonds, so I have a single bond, minus one, so oxygen has a negative one charge, okay? And nitrogen versus oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. It's closer to fluorine on the periodic table, or it's smaller and more attractive, so it attracts electrons better. All right, just looking at some shapes, this is really just kind of talking about the sheet that you picked up today. Um, octahedral is 90 degrees. This is your octahedral shape, and 90 degrees in general is bad, so these guys are rare. If you have to yank off um, an electron, uh, or yank off a bond, you yank it off the bottom one, and that is square, planar. And if you made it look like a little pyramid, you can see it's a square pyramid. Um, yank off another one, which would be yanking off the top one, and then you have square, planar. And then if I yank off another one, I get a T-shape. If you don't know what a T looks like, 
Um, you're in the same boat as Peggy, who didn't know what a T looked like either. Anyway, either way. Um, this is a trigonal bipyramidal, the top one. Um, you pull off the equatorial ones first. So I'm going to pull off this guy right here. And if I pull off that guy right there and knock it down, look, it looks like a seesaw. Oh, so you can go teeter-totter. And you can put little kids up here, and they say, wee, wee, I want to go again. And then the kid on, on the bottom jumps off, and the kid on the top goes, ah, and falls down and crashes and cries, and people laugh, and he gets suspended, and it's a bad thing. T-shape, that's a T on its side, Peggy. And then linear, if you don't know what linear is, I weep for you. Tetrahedral starts off with this guy right here, bond angle 109.5. Oops, I forgot to mention bond angles. Um, bond angle is 90 and 120. This right here would be 90, this right here would be 90, this right here would be 90, and the 120 would be, and yeah, this is a circle, it's like trigonal planar, divided into three parts. So tetrahedral has the 109.5, this is the four regions one, this is where people fall. Uh, four regions is not equal 90 degrees, so people get that wrong in Alabama and such. So you start off with trigonal, I'm sorry, tetrahedral. Then exchange a bond for a lone pair, and you get trigonal pyramidal, or pyramidal, or whatever it is you want to do. Then you've got bent. Um, trigonal planar is a brand new one, just like this. Bond angle here is 120. There's nothing new there. Um, here's bent. These bents are very different. Okay. This is a bent with a bond angle of about 105 degrees. This is a bent with a bond angle of about 118 degrees. Why? because this one has more electron pairs, which equals more repulsion, which means your bond angle wiggles into something smaller. Oh, why do angles shrink by lone pairs? Um, electron pairs have more condensed, condensed um, charge, so stronger repulsion. Stronger repulsion. So smaller bond angles. Yay. Review. Man, this was long. Draw a bajillion Lewis dots. That's what we get to do for the next day or so. 90 degrees is unfavored high energy, but it does exist if you have six regions of electronegativity. Resonance is good. It spreads out the repulsion. You should know the names of the shapes, and that's what that sheet is for. Um, yes, you have to memorize it. Um, make a shape ornament for our chemistry um, for extra credit, which is due after the Thanksgiving break. So Skirt's going to try and make his now and buy styrofoam. And if you make styrofoam things and try and paint them, the styrofoam dissolves in the paint. So goodbye. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the test. Toodles.